last week on the Al Nicoletti Show. Nathan Turner. Nathan, welcome to the Al Nicoletti Show. Banks are not set up to own property. They just want to loan out money, charge an interest rate and get paid, and then a whole bunch of fees on top of that. The thing that took me a little time to get my head around is I have not bought the property. What I have bought is the mortgage which is great. Banks don't fix roofs. Banks don't fix toilets. Banks don't get phone calls in the middle of the night telling them that there's, you know, something going on with the house. And that's part of what I love about this is that it's fun connecting with other humans <laughs> about human issues and human problems. You're going to buy all these notes or none of the notes. And so that's a, that's a bulk purchase. So you're just going to get what you're going to get. And, and this is why I love the yeah. show and I love the fans like Rodney, Thank you for Very asking much. these questions because we we want you to learn. We want everybody out there to learn and and grow on these topics like that Nathan's talking about. So uh, Rodney asks, what is an accredited investor? An individual makes $200,000 a year or, or jointly with a spouse, $300,000 $300, a year or has a net worth of a million dollars, not including their primary residence. You can absolutely use your IRA to invest in notes. Very, very powerful tool and a fantastic way to build your retirement. Wow, there you go, right there. Thank you again for being on, the Canadian hey, field guy himself. Mm -hmm. I think everybody learned so much about notes last week on the Al Nicolay Show with Nathan Turner, the Canadian note guy. If you missed it, you got to go back and watch the episode. It's on the Al Nicoletti YouTube channel, and you can find it on Facebook under Al Nicoletti and the business page under Al Nicoletti. And welcome, everybody, to the Al Nicoletti Show. Uh, we are live, and I love bringing the best guests on the show and showcasing their, uh, their work, their abilities, their business, and everything about it. So if you like content like this, you have to go check out the Al Nicoletti YouTube channel, the Facebook page, the iTunes and Spotify under Al Nicoletti show. You'll find all the amazing guests that have been on the show and also all the content on probate partitions and all the weird and different stuff in the real estate world that we all love thinking about and talking about when it comes to overcoming title situations. So go check that out. And uh, you're in for a special treat tonight. I have an amazing guest, and we're going to introduce him to the show, and we're going to talk all about some powerful knowledge and things when it comes to CRM, mindfulness, and best practices in our business as investors and real estate professionals. And I can't wait to bring him on because I bring on these powerful guests. So before we dive in, I'm going to do my intro. We're going to do an intro of Carlos because it's going to be big. We're going to make it huge. So stay tuned, everybody. Get your pens and paper out. I do. I know we're going to have tons of questions and notes, and you can ask your questions live because you know I love when you all interact on the show and ask questions because we all want to learn and grow together. So stay tuned. Watch the show. Learn all you can on CRMs and what Carlos Zamora can bring. Hey, everybody. My name is Al Nicoletti. I'm an attorney here in Florida, and welcome to the Al Nicoletti Show, where I bring on real estate super investors, rising rock stars, movers and shakers, and leaders of clubs in their community that educate, entertain, and inspire all things on Florida real estate and beyond Florida real estate in all the other states that we're all in doing investing in, right? All these other investors and real estate professionals that are not just in Florida, but are doing deals virtually, right? From either California or Texas, love the Texas market and Michigan, Ohio, and all the other states where you could do deals and you learn from all these people that can help elevate your business on how you can take your company to the next level. On my show, Super investor, special guest, Carlos Zamora. This guy is the man. Every time I see Carlos, we're always brainstorming and masterminding. Like this is the kind of guy that when you step in the room, you know that there's going to be something that's happening in that session. And, and he brings a lot of knowledge. He brings that energy and he brings that powerful presence of what investors are really thinking and seeing through the lens of sellers and what investors want when it comes to their business, right? Because it's not just about deals, but it's how to think through deals and how to have that balance in what you do. And I got to say, 
when I met Carlos and I met him at the mastermind, the family mastermind, I loved this guy from the minute I met him and we hit it off. And at the time I saw him, we're going to talk about this. At the time I saw him, he was still in Baltimore. He was making his move from Baltimore and I'm so proud of him. He finally left and he made it down to Miami. He's in the 305. You see the, the hurricanes back there. So the 305, the U, yeah, you got it. Uh, and we're going to talk about his move and he runs this company with Investor Fuse. Investor Fuse is a powerful CRM that a lot of investors leverage to get deals. And we're going to talk about some great stories and great case studies, but he's going to talk about the importance of having a CRM, what the basics are, and what investors that are super investors that have been in the game a while still can leverage with it, that things they may not even know, and the tools and power of what it can bring and, and everything about it. And the best practices when it comes to lead management. We're gonna talk about the psychology of sellers and seeing what they're seeing and, and having that acquisition team of what putting those pieces together is like. And we're gonna talk about mindfulness in business relationships and entrepreneurship. Because it's not just about deals, but it's about how you can find that balance in what you do, and that helps elevate your levels in real estate and in success. So without further ado, I can't wait to have him on and introduce you to everybody, Carlos Zamora. Hey, Carlos, welcome to the Al Nicoletti Show. Love seeing you, brother. Likewise, man. It is a pleasure and privilege to be live with the Prince of Probate. Thank you so much for having me on. Shout out to Michael getting us set up here beforehand. Super excited to be on. Absolutely love it. Love it, man. I love that you're here. And I love that your journey, your whole journey of how uh, you were in Baltimore. Now you're in Miami and um, the whole journey of Investor Fuse over the last six years and, and how it's morphed and changed. You know, tell everybody, you know, Carlos Zamora, where were you before real estate? You know, where were you in this transition from Baltimore to Miami? And Where's where are things today? And we're gonna dive in, in on investor fuse. Yeah, man, absolutely. Thank you guys so much for watching this. Everybody that's live on here. I've seen some of Al's episode, absolutely legendary intros. Everybody says that, but you don't experience it until you're behind the scenes chatting with Michael and they put you through something that's kind of like a mix between Space Mountain and like a roller coaster and the <laughs> Michael Vick experience commercial, if you guys are familiar. So love to be on here. I got into wholesaling after college. I had a communications degree, didn't really know what I wanted to do with it. I was at home applying for jobs, didn't have a job for a while, was babysitting my older niece, got offered a um, opportunity to take a interview for pharmaceutical sales. All my family's in medicine, including my dad who's in Miami Beach, he's a doctor down here. Didn't get that job. And I had heard of this kind of mysterious figure through my sister, and I guess my brother-in-law now, of this guy who was like flipping houses without buying them. His name was Dan Schwartz. I saw a job posting of his while we were on a ski lift looking for inside sales. And I said, you know what? I never really wanted a corporate job. I'm gonna check this thing out. Met with him, learned about wholesaling, started wholesaling in Baltimore. That was end of 2013 into 2014. Pretty much the, the long story short of it, or kind of how Investor Fuse came to be, is Dan was playing in a rock band managing this Baltimore wholesaling business or acquisitions business, playing 180 shows a year, going in a van. So what he was doing, he always had a knack for building out our CRM, which is on top of Podio, which was on top of Podio at that point. So he was always just up till like late at night. I literally thought there was something wrong with this guy because I didn't understand like entrepreneurship. I thought people just work nine to five. Every single night he was tweaking out our CRM software, which is like where you manage leads and understand your marketing and things like that. And he started just putting out free videos on YouTube, essentially, of how we were setting up our Baltimore wholesale business, CRM. He got enough demand just from people commenting and reaching out to him on YouTube and social media. He decided to launch a platform, one platform first, that was like a one-time swipe your credit card, one time or one-time payment. And then it got even more demand. And then he launched Investor Fuse. Investor Fuse was launched February 2016, a little over six years ago, which is crazy. About a month after that, Dan reached out and he was like, hey, Los, you should you know, hop on Zoom calls like this, similar to this, train different companies from all across the country, literally like almost every single state, on how to set up their teams and utilize a CRM so that they could get the most out of their marketing dollars. 
it was such a good fit personality wise or like me doing that more of a consulting with all these companies and businesses across the country than negotiating with sellers, negotiating with buyers every single day. It was such a good fit. They brought me on full time as a partner about a month after that. That was April 2016. And I've been doing that ever since. So a little over six years, about six and a half years. Um, so stop doing wholesaling full time to do investor views. Absolutely love it. Have made the absolute best part of the job is the amazing relationships and connections that you make. Like, you know, you and a mastermind, but also like literally thousands of companies at this point, which is crazy to think about. Um, one quick thing, just because I see him over your right shoulder. And I can't remember if we connected on this or not, but the day after I moved to Miami, good friend, good friend Raul Balupe, he's been multiple times on my show. I've been on his show, brought this guy from another mastermind, Ken Clothier's mastermind. It ends up being Gonzalo Porzo. I see the Cash Geeks hat behind you. We meet, we just start talking business. He's in Jack's, he's in Al's neighborhood. He's in Jacksonville. And he's like, dude, I use investor views. I did 300 transactions with a team of 24 people out of investor views last year. And I didn't know who he, I didn't know who he was, which is rare because typically I try to connect with as many of our companies as possible, especially people that are doing that high of a volume. So it was absolutely like, that's like one of the most fulfilling things when you meet someone, have a fun day on a boat, but also they're like, Hey man, your software helped me close. 300 plus transactions using it last year, which is amazing. And you know, you must know these guys. I, I need to get some oh, yeah. stuff back there. In addition to, I didn't mention I need the Alan Nicoletti year as well. Oh yeah. I mean, shout out to the geeks. I mean, they're killing it on deals right now. They're getting what 300 deals in the, like last year, I think they did over 300 mm -hmm. deals. So, uh, G and Dom, they're killing it in the market for Jacksonville and they're going all over too, right? They're, mm -hmm. they're not even just in that location. I mean, they're, they're probably using that software for everything. So, um, and I, and I love it. I love that you were, were able to finally connect with a user and ends up being G and, you know, and he's using that software and just killing it. Um, and, and that's why I saw even in the, uh, some of the case studies we'll go over when we go over all the CRM stuff, uh, which was, uh, Nick Perry, Mike Fitzgerald, G Gonzalo Corzo, uh, and, and Max Maxwell, some of these great, great investors that have been using that software, which is huge, um, and having great success with it. So you got it right there. But Carlos, before we dive in on the case studies and some of the things and, and uh, investors have used with InvestorFuse, we got to break it down from like CRM, like what a CRM is and, you know, the importance of having one and what that, what that could mean and how it can transform your real estate business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a CRM, the acronym CRM stands for Customer Relationship Management. We've actually pivoted a little bit from our first version. We'll probably go through like the progression of investor views as well over the last six years, but we've pivoted a little bit from that. Uh, tr CRM traditionally is kind of like a database of all the contacts. Like we could take any type of business and it would pretty much be like a database of contacts and some type of contact management, being able to communicate with them. The first version of investor views we launched for the real estate people out there, especially wholesalers, because we launched it kind of as a niche tool for wholesalers even though it's any real estate investor that's doing direct to seller marketing. So you were just on Brent Daniel's show. He was a longtime investor fuse member. If you're cold calling, texting, if you have carrot sites, if you're doing direct mail, TV, radio ads, any type of way you're marketing should be able to go into a CRM like investor fuse to capture those leads from your marketing funnels, all your different marketing channels, and then give you and your team the best chance at being organized as far as talking to these people right away and reaching out to them. So kind of, I think the, the question is what a CRM is like kind of high level. It's essentially a database for contact management. Every single industry has one pretty much, but ours is very niche for investors doing direct to seller marketing. Yeah. So tell us about that. Like what yeah. is investor fuse and like how can investors leverage the power of the investor fuse tool to get more leads or, uh, you know, do more things with it. Cause I remember we were talking about it, capturing marketing, marketing, uh, getting better KPIs, all of those things mm -hmm. can, you can leverage it. Yeah. When we launched the first version, like kind of the, the short version of it, the Podio, it's a project management tool. that's like pretty robust and you have to have some level of tech savviness. So that was a lot of the value that we brought to the marketplace that we have just wanted to rip out of investors responsibility of doing. If you guys are listening to Al's show, you guys should be talking to sellers, talking to buyers, going to networking events, maybe getting more education on how to put together different types of deals besides just cash deals. So the first value of a good CRM is like, hey, 
we're going to take away all the tech setup that you have going on so that you can just focus on seeing records with sellers and following up with them. The very first thing like where our product starts, like we've talked about is when marketing comes in, what our tool allows you to do is put you in a successful position to talk to those leads within five minutes and even simultaneously with some automation. So kind of like top to funnel, we can break the product down kind of like yeah. from start all the way to end of transactions. Um, so five minute rule, you guys have all heard of it. It's in sales industries for different types of marketing, whether it's online leads coming in, whether it's direct mail, the long and the short of it is the quicker that you respond to a lead that comes in from your marketing, your conversion rate just absolutely skyrockets. Like it's crazy. I was looking up, I was even looking up some statistics and I'm seeing them over the course, some marketing channels, it's like 50% higher conversion rate. If you reach them in five minutes versus over an hour. So think about that. That's absolutely crazy. You guys are spending money on marketing. A good CRM is almost like taking out a marketing or an insurance policy on your marketing because mm -hmm. you're allowing your team, you're like setting up automation. So if somebody calls you at 11 o'clock at night or they go on your website and a lot of these sellers are in distressed situations where they just might be like Googling, like, man, I need to sell my house or they get your fourth postcard after six months of your direct mailing and spending money to talk and they're like, you know what? I saw this person, I looked on their website, they look legit, I'm in tough times right now, I'm gonna call this person. So another thing to think about on like that avenue is most of these sellers that you're chatting with and that are coming into your CRM, they're also going into other investor CRM. So I wanna kind of show you how you can like set, like it's small tweaks, like a lot of things in life. Small tweaks done consistently is where you end up seeing absolutely massive results down the line in your 30, 60, 90 day, 120 day funnel. So that's one of the things that you can set apart if you have your automated follow or uh, automated responses set up. So anybody that comes in from your marketing, you're texting and emailing them right away. In addition to you can custom route who on your team you want to talk to that person. If you're just starting out, I'm like, I'd be curious to hear kind of what your listener base is like, if it's like more so beginners or more experienced or kind of a mix of everybody. But this conversation is applicable to everybody because if you're just starting off, like I talked to some people today that are just, one person operations, they're talking to all these leads, but the very first person that you hire and kind of like our investor fuse or a good CRM really, really helps is allows you to bring in that first person that's like on the acquisition side of things, typically a lead manager or someone that's doing lead intake and is seller facing. And that's kind of one of the first areas that you can look to outsource and that investor fuse trains them on with a lead manager training course. It's like a documentation of, how to use the system. You take a quiz. You, once you pass the quiz, you become a certified lead manager on investor fuse. So we almost help you bring SOPs to the table for a lead manager in addition to zoom training, but that's what you're doing. You're custom around these leads. You want to make sure whoever on your team, whether it's you lead manager, you know, if you're like G and you have 24 people on your team, it's going to look a little different for all the marketing channels, but that's really the first area is lead intake, capturing leads from all your marketing, an automated response to them to set you apart from anybody else, making sure the correct person is talking to those sellers. And then essentially from a high level, I, I like to keep things simple. Essentially from a high level, what you're doing is you're managing the next actions that you need to take with your seller leads. And then you also have a huge tool in your tool belt, which we're gonna hit on, follow-up sequences, which are drip campaigns. So that those are templates that can be two years. We put some default ones that go for 14 months, those are essentially templates that can be two, three years of text messages, emails, and ringless voicemails that go out automatically to the seller. And then you have cool functionality as far as pretty much just getting notified if and when they respond is essentially what's going on. So what we've designed with the new version, we can talk a little bit about the different versions and growth of investor fuses the product and the company, but the main thing that we've done is those two leverage, like we've just kept things simple from working with you know thousands of companies at this point we've kept things simple around those two leverage points. When a lead first comes in to your conveyor belt for marketing, and then when an existing lead tries to re-engage you in conversation, which is one of the biggest pieces of a CRM. Um, and then you can do some other stuff out of it as well. Like you're selling, you know, you're managing your buyers and selling properties out of it, uh, appointments, creating offers, things like that. So for those who aren't familiar, if you're pretty established in this business, um, it's a very good chance you have some type of CRM or have used a couple, but if you're more so starting off, a CRM is essentially just like the main tool for managing your seller leads and your business really. Yeah, I like what you were talking about with the automated responses. 
And yeah. uh, I've, I've seen some investors build that out. Like, for example, they their lead flow is just so much, but they want to qualify the leads better. So they developed almost like, you know, 10, 10 different automated responses. And by the time that motivated seller hits that number 10, they know that by then it's a qualified lead. Let's follow mm -hmm. up with them like a normal way, you know, get them on the phone, uh, you know, get the VA on it. So I love that, you know, investor fuse is, is using those capabilities to have those automated responses so you can really get the leads you want, not just everything, and then you're spinning your wheels doing all that stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, I I love also how we talked about uh, before we got on about how InvestorFuse was the first company to build a turnkey solution on top of Podio, right? It was a huge tech wave for you guys. And the fact that you were able to have those things and have uh, use InvestorFuse to focus on talking to sellers and networking and, you know, using those tools. So tell us all about that. Yeah. So first company to build a turnkey solution for investors on top of Podio, which is a project management space. Anybody who's doing wholesaling is a very good chance you've heard of Podio at some point, just doing CRM searches. It, it's pretty robust. You have to do a lot, pretty much like coding, almost like back end coding. So Dan Schwartz, one of the co-founders, that was not necessarily his skill strength, he, skill set or main skill set. He kind of just brute forced his way into building it. And it was cool just to talk. And I mean, this may be a little bit of a, a geeky conversation on the days that I wear my, my glasses. I look like I'm the tech guy, but I'm like the farthest person from the tech guy in the entire company. But um, a basic setup for an investor fuse workspace on top of Podio, the very first version, you would get three different workspaces and 50 to 60 different apps, essentially like buttons you could click that would open like a data field, whether it's seller leads, appointments, properties, offers, MLS listings, all these different things. What we came to, re and I mean, it's super powerful. Some people are, are still on it, like G and Cash Geeks are still on it because they're so embedded into it and they have 24 people on the platform. Um, but what we came to find out was like the learning curve of getting your team actually trained on it is very, very steep. And we provide amazing training. We provide training on Zoom. We have the whole thing documented, but it was just like robust. And anybody that's on Podio probably knows that it's, it's very customizable. But then again, this is almost like a mindset thing. Mark Evans, if you're familiar, he was at the last family event, which I missed, but um, he talks about this a lot. And there's a video of him talk, like kind of reading somebody out where it's like, man, you spent two months just tweaking out a Podio instead of actually taking action in your business, talking to sellers, paying for marketing, getting marketing out the door, interviewing lead managers, things like that. So the 80-20 on the Podio version was that super, super powerful. It can do a ton of stuff, but it's very robust. And unless you have, unless you're like cash geeks and the very first thing you do is you, br you bring them in to train on investor views, it's just a challenging tool to adapt and train on. And we pretty much iterated the new version from feedback that we got from users to make it a lot more simple, easy to use, not just for you, but you guys are high level, high level thinkers. You guys are listening to Al Nicoletti. This guy is the prince of probate. He run, he's the Tony Soprano of probate guys. You guys are listening to him. You don't want to be talking to every single homeowner every single day. It's so like, you have a high level vision of what your business could be. You don't want to be talking to sellers and, and buyers every single day. Um, so that's what we focus on is like you can train your team on how to use this system with our help and just a simple intuitive tool. Um, going back to the podium though, I mean, there's a lot of companies. It's kind of like the guy that ran the four minute mile. I always mess up his name. Either George Bannister or Roger Bannister. It was a little bit like that. I mean, hats off to them. It was like they kind of we were the first one to launch and then the next year or the following year like there were like four or five other companies um probably pretty pretty similar in a sense but yeah we decided to make that we decided to make the move off of podio for two main reasons and it's it's paid off well for us at this point with the third iteration of investor fuse where one first and foremost it was the company's feedback we're always getting company or feedback from our companies that are using the platform we want to hear, hey, I like to get in the trenches because I'm not active in talking to sellers and doing transactions right now. I'm full-time software slash tech. So I like to get in the trenches, talk to people. Anybody that's on this show, please reach out. I see Al putting some, some contact info in there. Please reach out. I'd love to talk to you about your business, even if you're just getting started in real estate. But that's the number one thing that we care about is feedback from companies that are actually in that are actually using it. I'd love to hear about in the trenches what you want to see in a CRM, how you want to be interact, interacting with people in the CRM, 
you know, even something as detailed as like where you want the notes on the last conversation as you're calling through and texting them. If their mom is sick or they had to relocate for a job in Florida, you want to be able to have that up easily. And the second thing was at the end of the day, there are these companies, including us, that are built on top of Podio. But at the end of the day, we were building a company and scaling a software company that we didn't have full control of the back end because it's owned by a Podio is owned by a company called Citrix. They're bought by a company called Citrix. So it's a little bit of, I'm not coming up with an analogy off the top of my head here, but I guess it's almost like walking all out onto like a piece of ice and you don't know exactly when it's like going to break. You don't have full control of the temperature that it could potentially like break or like not, not uh, fully work and you just don't have control of it. So we're like, this may be a good junction to get off of Podio, just build our own tool. This version of Investor Fuse is the first version, I3 is the first version that we've had with our own in-house developers that we meet with every week. They're part of our staff, love them, friendly, you know, they're part of the company culture. So that's been absolutely amazing too, being able to bring out new features, new functionality every single week with in-house developers and an amazing team. I'd have to say the, one of the best things about Investor Fuse, which I'm sure we'll talk about is just like the support team and the integrations team. They work so hard and love setting up because man, it's complicated. It's like the marketing tools, like all the stuff that sets up, like you have like even this show, like that experience was like crazy, but you have a full team that if you were doing that, in addition, we were talking about how busy you are during the day, like that would be crazy. Uh, so yeah. We have, yeah. Like it's absolutely nuts. So I want to give up like the, the company is made from our support team and our customer success team that one trains your team how to use it. And then two is always adjusting your marketing tools. So, like there could be website changes, call rail changes, you know, anything and everything can go on with tech. And we don't, we want to be the easy button for you. Like, don't even worry about that. Send it to us in an email or a chat right inside the app and we'll take care of you. A um, little bit of a tangent there. I don't know where, where exactly we want to go from there, but. No, I mean, you're, I'm you're, passionate about it. you're hitting on it, right? You're hitting on all those points about what's making it different and how, how you kind of, how it morphed over time. And mm -hmm. uh, one of those things that I love that we were talking about was the fact that there's all the CRMs that do everything versus the ones that actually have specialty tools and other marketing uh, dials and the fact that you can capture leads from Carrot and everything uh, or capture other types of leads, right? And that's what's unique about Investor Fuse is that you have those abilities to capture through all of these other uh, lead sources and you can leverage it that way. And also the fact that you have that top level of customer service, right? So you have a business and you know you're running with it but a lot of the times you can get stuck in the business part you got to have that customer service side to your business and i and i love what you're talking about it's like with investor fuse you've developed not only just the business side and running it on the crm but also like the support the training um you know being there for people reach out if you you know if you want to really change your business model so people that really want to go from what they're doing with their crm today whatever they're using and really want to level it up because you can use and leverage the tools of investor fuse that's huge stuff, right? That's huge. So, um, you know, I love that you have that opportunity and uh, have that setup when it comes to CRM setup. So it, it's huge. I love it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And like, that's like, like, and for anybody that's even interested in, in CRMs, there's kind of two, and I was telling Al about this, there's kind of like, in my opinion, two general paths or philosophies with CRM setup, at least in this space. And it's, there are some great tools. I have good friends that I hang out with that use, you know, other tools that's investor fuse. I have great friends, obviously that use investor fuse. I don't know if we were live when I mentioned uh, my buddy, Fernando, will definitely be somebody I, I bring up that's crashing here for the week filming a real estate investing docu series with, for Dennis Quaid, the, uh, the actor, but there's essentially two different types of CRMs in this space. There is one that is like everything under the sun. It, it has a full feature list. You do your marketing out of it. You do your lead management out of it. You do your dispositions out of it. You might be able to connect it to QuickBooks, things like that. And then there is ours, which is more of a specialty tool where, like you said, you get your call rail, you get the top phone solution for all your inbound marketing. That's like covers direct mail, TV, radio ads, phone number on your website, rootless voicemail drops, bandit signs, anything like that. And then also like your carrot specialty multi-channel tools like REI reply, um, REI rail, things of that nature. So our philosophy of why we do that is we want to be the best in one area. We want to focus on one thing. I have this quote, shout out my buddy Bryce. He got me this because I had it written in my room, but it's the, one of my favorite books of all time is the one thing. And kind of our philosophy is like, we want to focus and be so good 
just on lead management, which for us starts at lead intake all the way to closing out the deal. And we just want to play nice and play the best with all the different marketing specialty tools that have the same mindset. Like they just want to focus, like Carrot just wants to focus on being the best lead generation website for investors and agents. Same thing with Caller. They want to be the best inbound phone solution, route your all your calls custom, give you the best call analytics. REI Reply wants to be the best. They're expanding their driving for dollars app. Deal Machine, popular one that we integrate with. They want to be the best driver, deal, uh, driving for dollars app. So that's kind of our philosophy is like stay in our lane, specialize in that, go all in on it, the one thing mindset, and then just connect and play nice and set up systems and processes where we can connect with anything that's in the market now, marketing, marketing tool wise, and anything in the future. Um, and then there are the tools that I mentioned first, where it's like they try to do everything. There is some convenience there of being able to run like your QuickBooks out of your CRM. Um, but in our opinion, we just, we just do it a different way where we like to specialize in areas. Yeah, no, that's that's great that you can integrate all those outside channels into Investor mm -hmm. Fuse and just make and leverage it. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, and a lot of the things that we were talking about too were, you know, you can get all these leads, right? So you got the system set up, you got the CRM set up, and you know, you're driving in leads, and now you're getting on the you're getting qualified sellers, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and people that are coming in. But it now it comes down to lead management. How do you manage those leads, you know? how do you have the right acquisition team, the right people, the right personalities, the right players on your team to handle those leads, right? And we were talking about the five minute rule and what action steps that you have to have uh, next in place so you make sure uh, you're following up and the psychology of following up too when it comes to these uh, sellers. So tell us about the best practices when it comes to lead management and how uh, investors, real estate professionals, whether they're listing properties or uh, getting more of the lead flow in their systems can help really pull apart and, and, and really develop a strong lead management. Absolutely. Great, great subject to hit on. And that's, that's exactly our wheelhouse is lead management, follow up, everything like that. One of the most popular sayings in the industry is the fortune is in the follow up. And pe so many people say it, but like, what does that, what does that actually mean? Like who is our end client as far as like people that are in the wholesaling industry or people that are marketing for properties off markets? They're sourcing their own deals. That's kind of what what I would say wholesaling is. Like what this industry is, you can, like people are learning different exit strategies. You talk to people that do different exit strategies, but it's essentially marketing or sourcing your own deals. So lead management and, the, and people talking about the fortune is in the follow up. I'm, I'm I'm like I hear that all the time. And I'm like, do people really understand why that is? your marketing is the right message at the right time that's when it's that's when a seller is able to you know do business with you and trust you and go under contract with you so as far as lead management it starts with the five minute rule you're talking to these leads as soon as they come in whether it's a direct they're calling you off a direct mail piece whether your cold calling team gets a hold of them and then transfers it over to a lead manager or acquisition that's absolutely where it starts and then most often someone is not going to be ready to go under contract that first time. That's like a unicorn. If someone just calls you we, and we can talk Google, we can talk different types of marketing and stuff, Google pay-per-click. If someone's going to your carrot site or other sites that you have or Facebook ads where someone's searching for you, that's a different, a completely different breed of lead. Kind of like that term breed of lead, completely different animal. But besides that, like it is going to be an absolute unicorn. If someone calls you very first time off a direct mail piece, and gets a random postcard from someone they don't know, and they're going to sell you your prop, your property at a deep enough discount that you're going to be able to make money on it on the back end. So I will, I'll keep it simple. One thing you guys should realize is the average, from what I've heard, and my perspective is just working with thousands of companies that use our platform, people in the industry, the average, think of it this way, and this will help emphasize the importance of the CRM. Most wholesale deals go under contract after three months of following up and at least touching that seller seven times, whether it's seven text messages, phone calls, anything like that. That's like kind of the sweet spot. So think of it that way. A lot of people like maybe this is, this is more geared towards the, towards the beginners of statement. Like a lot of people start off with like Google spreadsheets or pen and paper. I talked to a guy today that was managing off his, uh, his email. He has a website and he just has like, it comes to his email inbox he calls them and then sets up like a task in his, his Gmail. Um, but that's one thing to keep in mind is most of the deals are going to go under contract after three months of following up and seven touches. So one thing to think about as well is it's like a little bit of trial and error on the team that you have to leverage. So like there's not one cookie cutter answer I could give you guys. I wish there is, 
but you have to have the team available and try to get in as many quality manual follow-ups. Because as a company that provides automated touches, they're amazing. It can be a lead manager's best friend, but nothing is going to be better than manual calls. Christina Krauss from Postal Impact Virtual Lead Managers yeah, and in the family, she has a great analogy. I have to give her, her credit here. It's almost like changing baby's diapers, like following up with leads. It's something that you don't really want to, it's not something like fun to do, but as you, as you have a system and process for it, you kind of just like get it done, get it over with, you know, like it's going to be, and this is one thing I want to talk about that it's a little mentally draining, leaving voicemails and talking to these sellers that might not be very interested. That's on the lead gen, lead gen side as well. Um, so it can be a little mentally draining. So when you're thinking about lead management and the team to bring on, there is going to be trial and error, especially if you're starting off, it may just be you, but you want to have a lead manager in place. That's someone that's like super friendly. There's a ton of different personality tests out there that you can get into, but you want to have someone that's just like very smile and dial, very friendly. So probably someone not too dissimilar from Alan, like extroverted, happy, going to be happy to chat with you, but that also pre-frames them. One guy I want to talk about, Brandon Peterson, shout out to him. We started a live show on Fridays. We got to get you on there from the investor view team. Done. He's one of our, our top users using the new platform, the premium version. And he does extensive CRM training with his team, all on lead management and investor views. So he goes through and listens to the calls. And this is part of like the trial, um, the trial and error point that I'm trying to discuss. It's like, it's not a perfect cookie cutter thing. The, the, the things you should think about and preface your team with are the duration of getting a deal under contract that a manual touch, a manual call is always going to be better than something automated. We're going to talk about sequences in a little bit and how to optimize your sequences to stick out um, and really putting people in the right place as you have a team to leverage. It's, it, you may not be able to hire someone right now, but think of it as, sim as simple as this, that lead manager, someone either talking to a bunch of new leads or following up with cold and old leads. This is what Nick Perry called a follow-up specialist, huge, doing huge business out of investor views. Um, you want them touching all your cold and old leads where they're going to be leaving a lot of voicemails and talking to a lot of people that aren't interested. You want to have someone that's more of like a, uh, more of like a driver. If you're familiar with like the disc test, like a, like a driver, more of like a, um, alpha, like a type personality as your acquisitions, but they're going to get drained leaving all the voicemails and talking to people that aren't interested. If they're able to kick up a conversation, if your lead manager is able to kick up just conversation of someone that's even willing to hear what your company has to provide. Hopefully an amazing ethical service. You guys will listen to Alan Michaeliti, I'm sure you are. Um, and that's where the acquisition type comes in and can start going over numbers and pain points and doing all the, you know, all the Oren Klomp, all the, you know, um, sales tactics and just understanding, like they, they understand, they're able to understand pain points and move forward and start talking numbers and essentially close deals and essentially get deals under contract. But that's kind of like a very high overview. It's hard to give like a, a one cookie cutter lead management. That's essentially how I would think about it, working with a lot of companies and kind of the order of hiring where you're kind of starting front end to back, where you're starting with lead manager acquisitions, and then you can look at more disposition stuff and then maybe like some marketing as well. Yeah. I, and I, I love how you were talking about Nick Perry, because that's one of the case studies that I know you wanted to get into too, which was how mm -hmm. he was leveraging investor fuse through those strategies. So tell us like, you know, what was his experience like using the investor fuse software, getting past those sellers that, you know, everybody's leaving voicemails and calls and, you know, you have different personality types trying to get mm -hmm. through all those leads. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So funny story with Nick or just like interesting story at this point, he was one of the original investor fuse members but he was on an account with a mentor at that point, working a full-time job. I met him at a Sean Terry conference in Arizona about six years ago. We had been on Zoom calls before. It was kind of like us at family, like we hit it off immediately. Um, I thought he was wild. He was going out during the conference. We were like at a vendor table. He was talking to his credit card, like getting them to approve like a 10 or 20 K charge for direct mail at that point. I'm like, man, this guy's nuts. He's an awesome. He's, he's wild. Since then, just hit, has taken massive, massive action. Any wholesalers listening to this, you guys are going to know going to know Nick Perry. He started really deep diving and focusing on Google Pay Per Click, just learning the algorithms, getting all into that, um, and that became his main marketing channel. Even though he was pretty much doing everything, 
he eventually got, I can't remember exactly when, but maybe like a year after I originally met him and he went full, he started going full time into wholesaling, got his own investor fuse account, was absolutely crushing it, was still in Austin at this point. I think the first interview I did with Nick was maybe like four years ago, um, was like a personal trainer working at Indeed, started just absolutely crushing it, getting traction. He found a COO, or I guess he was, he might've been acquisitions at that point starting off, that is now his CEO, CEO running his company, doing nationwide wholesaling. His, whole, his main lead gen strategy right now is running nationwide, like we buy houses cash, but it goes to everybody in the country. So now he has that all funnel into investor views. I don't know the exact numbers of his team now, I'm talking specifically about that, but he has maybe four acquisitions people, probably four to eight dispositions people, in-person office, kind of like Wolf of Wall Street style in Austin. He's living here in Miami Beach, um, actually, but he's been in Texas a little bit. He's, he's gone on to get into oil and gas stuff, which is absolutely amazing. But yeah, he's been able to utilize it. He has kind of like a, a very detailed setup. He's, he's one of the companies that we work with the closest. So we definitely do a lot of like customizing and tweaking to, to his space. But one thing I love from Nick and I help people the last year, I would say, like, and I mean, numbers wise, I mean, he's doing 200K months every single month, rinse and repeat for the last couple of years, which is like absolutely insane. Google pay per click is more expensive, but I mean, he is absolutely crushing it. And the coolest thing to me is that he's completely out of his business. Like he does the marketing and stuff for fun, but he's promoted he's, his COO, who's absolutely the man, Brandon. He's promoted his COO to now CEO. So now he's like completely out of the business and he just enjoys looking at marketing and Google pay per click. Um, but one thing that I love from Nick talking to him the last year or two is the follow up specialist role, which is not necessarily a lead manager that's going to handle the lead intake. But the people that are on Nick's level, man, you guys spend so much, so much money on marketing and generating leads. You're going to have like a, you're going to start collecting a database. For example. You're going to start collecting a database of all these leads that have come in from your marketing, but they're like a year or so old, a year or older. So he had a follow-up special. That's the first person I heard that specifically just goes through your old leads and is just calling them, calling, calling, calling them. So he has those in investor views and that's where people get deals, guys. You get deals from calling old leads. Like the, that's why they say the fortunes in the follow-up because the first time someone may come in, it's, it's an interesting psychological thing with, with working with distressed sellers because it's like they may reach out when they're first feeling pain, but they might not be ready to give away, you know, for most people, the biggest asset they've ever had in their life, which is their, their house or their property. So that's one thing that Nick has helped me with talking to other investor fuse companies is, hey, how many like leads do you have that you marked as cold, but not necessarily dead that are, that are a year old? Like how many leads do you have in 2021 that are still in your follow-up campaign? Oh, would you consider bringing somebody on that's kind of like a lead manager personality, like bubbly, smiling a lot, that can just call through them and just say like, hey, this is Carlos. You came on our website about a year ago. I'm just checking in and you sold the property. No problem at all. I'm just here to help. So I've told that trick that's one of my favorite things from Nick that I've told a ton of investor fuse members over the last year or two is consider bringing somebody on or have your have your lead manager do a little bit of that in their downtime, just following up with the old leads. And you'd be surprised, guys, for those of you listening, you'd be surprised how many deals you can get just from following up with leads that you marked as cold initially. They may have told you, like, take me off your list, whatever, whatever. Um, but they're ready to sell. Things change. Right message at the right time to follow up. Yeah, and uh, I can think of two leads – uh, that came in for two investors in the last uh, day where, um, I mean, it was a complicated deal where one guy was still alive, but they couldn't find out where he was. And there were like five people on title and they were waiting to figure out a solution mm -hmm. to the deal. And the investor just kept following up about what's going on or what's happening. And uh, I don't know if they were a smile and dial personality, but, you know, a year later, all of a sudden, here it is again, like, you know, and I'm seeing it. I'm like, okay, now they can move forward with it. And it's amazing when you put the right people on, on your team that can follow up with those leads. Um, and then another one that came in the other day, it was a double probate and the investor, I remember they were like, I, we just hit her at the right time. We just got her on the phone at the right time. And I love what you were talking about before about being able to talk to sellers and find out what, what the needs are, the wants are and what the issues are, you know, even on a, on a deal I heard about the other day, she just – all she wanted to know what probate was. She just wanted to know what that was. Nobody would explain it 
to her and talk to her and communicate with her. And it was amazing how it came down to those basics, right? Mm -hmm. It didn't, didn't come down to money. It didn't come down to uh, how complicated the deal could be. It came down to somebody trying to explain a concept to her. And that's all she wanted to know. She said she just kept putting her head back in the sand until somebody kept until somebody came along to explain it. And I explained it. And you know what? Everybody's ready to move forward. So finding the right people in those roles can change everything for your business in, in lead gen. And, um, and, I, and I loved even what you were talking about. I, I think you put there Brandon Peterson. I don't know if we got to him, but you know how he's training his team with sweet sequences and everything uh, when it comes to lead management and, and finding the right people. So, um, you know, I, I, and I love it. And also, uh, one of the things that you were talking about is, and I think this was because of Brandon, is the type of messages and uh, double messages and uh, typos and things that you can put in these messages that kind of mm -hmm. really hit on, on sellers. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, sequences, and I've heard this, shout out the uh, Structurally team, I had them on my podcast, and uh, in, in addition to Al, obviously, but just some things with sequences, guys, and the new the new version of Investor Fuse allows you to get really specific, where you can choose, like, the exact minute the message is sent, and you can stack them on top. So this is, like, a quick tip, if you're making a clip for this episode, this is a quick tip on follow-up sequences, how to stick stick apart from your competition. So very first one is typos. If you're using something like investor fees where you can send, you can choose the exact minute a message is gets, getting sent out, put a typo in the first message and then have a message go out like a two minutes later with just the correct spelling and an asterisk. And that will, cause we're in a day and age where we're getting so many automated messages and it's coming more and more Instagram ads, ads on, uh, Snapchat, if you're going through people's stories, pretty much getting inundated with like messages that we're not necessarily opting in for. So it's a little bit of a game with the sequences where first having them in place, like have, just having an SOP for lead management in your business where you're using them. All right, you're in an amazing spot. Now we can start talking about optimizing those messages to stick away from the competition. But I see it as a game like this day and age where it's like, I want this person to think that I'm actually real. Like, I don't want them to think this is an automated trap, uh, automated touch. Like when you're going through, I, you know, I don't even know if you go, we're talking to Tony Soprano of probate here, but how fast do you like archive something in your email? That's like a promo email or something that you don't, that's like maybe the fastest thing that I do. Like if I see an email I don't need, I go through that and think of that from the seller's perspective. It's like, if they're getting something where it's like, you know, five investors reaching out to them that are like, hey, do you want to cash off or hey, do you want to sell your house? You know, all these things. I think of it like that. Throw a typo in there. I got that from the Structurally team. They do, they do artificial intelligence conversations. So we're going to look in the future of doing an integration with them. And we like to stay ahead of the tech scene. So that's some, some behind, this, the behind the curtain stuff of getting uh, artificial intelligence follow up in investor views like that. Uh, but that's tip number one. Put typos in there. Humanize your message. Um, and that's something that I'll put the, I guess if they're following up, they can talk, uh, structurally. And then the second one, like one thing I like to think about when people, it's a pain point for investors to write copy, which is like writing sequences. Like, and I try to think of it like this, think about the 20 to, to I'll, I'll simplify Think about like 10 to 20 seller lead scenarios that you come across the most often whether it's someone like ghosting you on a seller appointment and you're like, you know what? I'm just going to put, in addition to trying to call them, they're probably not going to answer. I'm going to put them on a touch of three months, but the first two weeks, I'm going to set it up to text and email them every single day. And it's just going to say, Hey, this is Carlos. We had an appointment. Give me a call back when you get this. So I don't need to worry about my energy, my team's energy on someone that goes to an appointment. Um, you could have specific ones for marketing. So you're going to have different wording in a follow-up sequence that came in from a cold calling lead. Like, Hey, you spoke to our, you know, you, you spoke to our sales team over the phone. We were trying to get a hold of you versus something that is a carrot lead or an online PPC lead. Like, Hey, you visit our website. Then you can send them back. If it's like an online lead or really any type of lead, you can send them back credibility and authority. So you can send them, for example, if you're inherited property solution, long time investor fuse, member up in the Northeast, um, you could send them an article, a landing page that's on your website that explains what probate is, that shift the title. You could send them that. You could send our process buying houses. 
So you can send them a lot of a lot of quick stuff. I know that's the one tip of the double messages. Um, another one is using emojis from the Structurally team. Really? Yeah, using emojis. You can throw those in there. But I would think of it like this: like get creative, have fun with it, but just try to like humanize your message and think think what stands out. But the typo is absolutely massive. And then like I would say the two main tips are the typos. And then in investor view specifically, what I like to set up with companies is similar to the typo where I leave a ringless voicemail. Let's say I set up a ringless voicemail to go out at nine and use random times. So it's not like 10 o'clock. You'll notice good, like if you guys are looking at like email marketing, you'll notice like some companies get creative, like some will send at the top of the hour or in the middle of the hour. Look at the companies that send at like 937 or 1003. So what I like to do is I like to set up sequences where it's like 9.41 a.m. You can hit them with a good morning. You can pull their first name from the opportunity record and investor views. You could say, good, or let, let's say a voicemail first. I'd like to set up, set a ringless voicemail at 9.42. And I can say, hey, good morning. This is Carlos. I tried to get a hold of you yesterday. Um, I left a voicemail. wasn't able to get a hold of you. Give me a call back if you get this. Then you could schedule a text message two minutes later. And I can say, hey, this is Carlos, just left a voicemail with you. Give me a call back when you get this. So that's just one day of touches in something that could be two years long. And once you have it saved in your investor fees account as a template, you don't even need to think about it anymore. This is just a lead that's sitting there. It's going to be on automated touches. If you have a follow-up specialist like Nick Perry, you could also you know, try to manually call them every 30 days, kind of the sales industry standard. But that's like cut and dry done, and you're going to stand out from other people. If you're putting typos in there and you're getting creative, like double tapping them with a ringless voicemail and a text message. So that's like a small example of sequences, uh, kind of kind of bounce around a little bit there, but some cool things that I, I get excited talking to, to companies about. No, I think that you're hitting on so many great points because if you're thinking about like Facebook leads, let's say you're doing Facebook mm-hmm. ads and you know you have those automated messages set up. Uh, sometimes like the automated messages could look just too you know, structured, but like, you know, if you set it up where it's like a, instead of a capital W to start the sentence, it's lowercase and, you know, maybe a double space, you know, between the next word and like a random comma, you know, it looks like somebody's doing it or they're just quick with doing it, but it's to try to make it look human. And, um, and those are great tips that can help on the next lead gen. I love that. Yeah. And I mean, even some people get creative. I, I, I don't recommend, I don't personally recommend this a ton, but I, I do like the idea of it. And guys, get like just get creative. And that's like a thing about just slowing down in your day to day and thinking about stuff. Um, some people put sent from my iPhone in the bottom signature. So it looks like a personal email. Like if you're doing like an email sequence from investor views, they just put sent from my iPhone and they could maybe stack that with a typo. That's gonna look like some dude, some real estate dude in a pickup truck that is just genuinely like maybe has trouble using an iPhone trying to email you follow up because they want to do business and buy your property and help you in whatever troubling situation that you have. So it's cool to think about that. It's not necessarily like a, like a super, super hot, sexy topic, but it's something to have in place and and spend some, spend some time thinking about it. You all are getting a masterclass right now with Carlos (laughs) Zamora. I mean, this is, this is fire stuff right now. Uh, I'm learning so many tips and tricks. I mean, I'm not even doing it on, on an investor level, but you know, when it comes to lead gen or getting leads or, you know, figuring out how to improve on leads or maybe have more of that lead gen uh, setup. I mean, everybody's like going to learn from this and um, I love everything you're going through and, and Don't forget, I got a great talking point we're going to talk about in just a minute, but I just wanted to go to everybody that's watching right now. Um, I love Michael, Mike, Mighty Mike's watching. Uh, Josh Hines is watching. And uh, Dom Felix from Cash Geeks. Dom's watching. Yeah, Dom, I mean, we're, you know, that's that's huge stuff that the geeks are using Investor Fuse. And uh, now that we all know that they're using Investor Fuse, now we can all get uh, 300 deals, right? Um, well, uh, yeah, I, I, haven't, I haven't met Dom, and I just met G almost a month ago to the date um, on Raul Balufe's boat, who they just interviewed. I caught some of that the other day. That was awesome. Cool. I love their just, I, we got to do one like that where they're just like kind of drinking beers in the, in the studio there. That's awesome. There you go. There you go. Love it. Yeah. Dom, Dom's watching tonight and, um, and Kobe, Kobe's watching. He just tuned in and he said, uh, way cool stuff, but my model requires no email, but if I did, I get it. There's an art to email. So, Mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's good stuff there from Kobe. 
and uh, Daniel Martinez, he's watching. Let's go, man. So people are watching. They're, they're you know, tuning in. Uh, Dom says, Investor Fuse is the shit right there. How about that? I <laughs> uh, love it. I love it, Dom. Love it. Dom, I, need, I, need, I told G I need to get him on my podcast, but we'd love to have both of you guys out there. It's not, not too far of a drive from Miami. There you go. Awesome. There you go, guys. Um, yeah, and, and you know, Carlos, one of the things that – uh, I know we wanted to talk about, which actually helps with sellers, is being authentically yourself, right? And how successful investors are breaking those barriers now to getting to and tapping into more sellers and what the psychology of that seller is 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 like. So um, I know you had said that making that interaction with that seller or lead and trying to make the most of it and making it a memorable experience can really elevate your game in the lead gen, uh, lead management source. Right. Um, and if that you have the intention and the business mindset, um, and you actively can really tap into that, you can really elevate that stuff. So talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah. That's like one of my mental frameworks. And again, I said it a couple of times on this, this episode, I guess it's just the best way I'm describing it. I like to keep things as simple as possible. So I like to set up, I like to give myself mental frameworks to kind of work out of. anything that happens throughout my day, anything that happens through my life, I kind of put simple mental frame, frameworks in place. One of my favorite ones that's kind of like applicable for this conversation and lead management, just like business and life in general, really, is if I'm having an interaction with somebody, Al and I are talking on a live broadcast right now, but I want to make that interaction with Al, anybody else I talk with today, I want to make that the most memorable interaction that they have throughout the entire day. Like Al might be doing emails on Friday morning and be like, man, Carlos was calling me the Tony Soprano of probate in Florida. You know, like it, it's a simple mental framework of like, how can I do something creative, spark emotion out of this person where they really, cause what's, what's the quote? It's like, people don't remember what, what you say. They remember how you make them feel. So that's, a, I love it for this business, especially lead management. Like, so many people are just dialing, maybe giving a cash offer. Hey, are you looking to sell? Hey, are you looking to sell? What could you do in your investor fees account? Dom, his, his massive team there, like you probably have notes on what the conversation was, what they're going through. Think about how you can be creative and bring that person like joy and sell the picture of what it's like to work with you. Like, why are they going to feel good working with you? Like, what's their end vision that you're trying to paint for them? But that's one of my favorite things to think about like on a daily basis is anybody I talk to, whether it's the person downstairs in my apartment, the barber, whoever I'm talking with every single day in Zoom meetings, business, it's like I want my interaction with them that day to be the most memorable one. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, even on the phone the other day, it's like you you focus, your, your energy is with that person, right? Mm -hmm. So you're not thinking about everything else, like you're really making an impact to have that moment with that person. And same thing goes mm -hmm. with the sellers, right? I think that's that's huge. And I and mm -hmm. I love that you brought that up because when you make that impact on them, they won't forget. And that may change the direction that they go and where they go. Uh, so all this is valuable stuff. I mean, I think everybody loves to learn all about this. And, um, and I know another thing that we wanted to cover was, you know, it's one thing to have the real estate business. It's one thing to have the lead generation, uh, the CRM, but it's also what you're doing as a balance in your life between mindfulness and, uh, you know, visualization and finding those balances and what you're doing on a daily basis. So the fact that you have to implement mindfulness and personal development, what is that all about? And, and how did you come to that realization? And what are some of those practices that you're doing today to help elevate your business? Yeah, my last year in college, I read the book Think and Grow Rich. Everybody, I'm sure if you ask everybody on this show or any real estate show, they're reading like that or Rich Dad, Poor Dad that got them into real estate. But not necessarily like, like love money. Everybody should should want to be wealthy for them and their family, everything like that. But the chapter of Think and Grow Rich that just interested me the most was on auto suggestion, where you can pretty much tell your brain something. You can say something to yourself. You can it, 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 essentially intentionally program your mind. So investor fuse is a, is a business and software all about automating your software and your different real estate processes and things like that. Auto suggestion, mindfulness, intentionally program your subconscious. That's self automation. Like how you're able to control your behavior because 95 or more percent of your actions, different places will tell you different things, but 
the simple way of thinking about it is like most of the way that you act, the actions that you take, how you interact with people is on autopilot, which is crazy to think about. I was listening to a good podcast with one of my mentors. I was in his uh, mastermind, Aubrey Marcus. And you, you were talking a little bit about like mindfulness and just kind of day-to-day -day living. But a lot of people are like most days, they're like one or two stressful or bad things happening in their real estate business from just not being in, in a good place. Like not having those genuine conversations, not fully showing up for your business partner, not following up with sellers when you're going to, not fulfilling your word saying what you're going to. So it's just super important to do things to lock in your self automation and program it for positivity and abundance and just like being the best version of yourself at the end of the day. And I love, I mean, I'm, I just turned 32. I, I look, I look younger than I am, but I absolutely love that this like wave of entrepreneurship, real estate investors. who I talk to some of the best people in the world are super focused on like health and wellness because they realize that's the foundation of everything. Like even we were, we were talking the other day and it's like, man, it can be stressful working the whole day and shooting the podcast and stuff like that. And I love that you have things in place, which I'll give some like quick habits from the book, like happiness advantage, which is a professor that talks about the psychology of that. Um, but I love that you have some stuff in place. It's like, man, I worked all day. I'm going to do some things to relax, get in my zone before I do my creative genius, which is talking to people, connecting with people, everything like that. Um, the long and short, the 80, 20 of it is gratitude. Like if you have some type of way that you're capturing things that you're grateful for at the beginning of the day, end of the day, you're going to be ahead of 99% of people as far as like programming yourself for the best version of yourself. And then really just like what you read, digest, I can go to a bunch of things. But if you guys are listening to this podcast, like that's, an, that's a perfect, perfect example of just something to digest on either a daily or a weekly basis, just to program your mind to take certain action. Like you might listen to this and you'll take an action tomorrow or within the next week that you wouldn't have taken if you didn't listen to this podcast. Um, another thing, and I was talking about this, I want to give a shout out. I mean, I, I gave you a ton of like mentioned a bunch of people, but um, my buddy, Fernando, Longtime investor fuse guy. He's self, he's since gone to self storage. I should actually get him on the show. He's he absolutely kills it with self storage. Um, but we had been friends for like six years, but haven't met in person using investor fuse. And he was filming the, the docu series for Dennis Quaid um, in Fort Lauderdale. So he's crashed on a place in Miami. And we were having dinner last night. We were just talking about life and business and everything like that. And, um, you know, he's able to help his family out a lot or like provide for his family just because he's doing so well with his business. And we're talking about, it, like, man, one thing I say is, like, think it, it kind of goes hand in hand with, like, making the interaction the most memorable for that person is I'm a big fan of having conversations that people wait until they're, like, on their deathbed or, like, towards the end of their life. Like, I think I want to change the narrative. Like, start having those type of conversations as your day-to-day -day, or what's the expression? Give people their roses while they're still alive. Like, show appreciation, gratitude, love for people. And your life and your business can absolutely explode. And you'll just have a better quality of life and, and be happy. Like, who doesn't want to be happy, make money, and, you know, have good experiences? That's right. what it's all about. So there's a ton I could go into. If you are more so interested in that, feel free to reach out. We, have, we also have a mastermind called 8020 Academy where all my modules and, like, coaching – or not, not coaching, but modules and stuff that I cover is all on mindfulness and kind of setting up systems and processes around the beginning and – end of your day. Another hack I'll give on here actually, just as I was telling Fernando and his buddies from Chicago is getting an iPod. So I have an iPod that mimics all the apps on my iPhone, but it doesn't have any calling, texting, email. I put my phone away and I like a lot of you guys are probably talking to like sellers or stuff like throughout the day. So like you need or like early in the morning, late at night you need it. Um, that is an absolute great way just to bookend the beginning of your day and end of your day where you're not looking at text, you're, you're dictating your day. You're choosing what you do in the morning, meditating, visualization. There's a ton of science of just that's healthy for your brain. But if I don't look at my phone the first morning, like keep it in a closet or a different room, and then don't look at the last hour before I go to bed, I'm reading a good book. That's like an absolute superpower if you consistently read. I'm sure most people listening to this are reading. Um, but man, you are just an absolute different person. If you control your days by bookending your morning and night, not having your phone, not letting like a like an email or something going on with probate, that type of stuff affect your morning right when you wake up before you go to the gym or do something. Like you're just on a different path that day. And I love that it's more common knowledge. Like if you read, um, what book is it? The Billionaire Code, something like that. 
all these books and studies and everything talk about that the main commonality between the with the ultra wealthy is they have some type of morning routine i think like why why does that matter and it's really because you have to think about your entire life just as like a day and you have to think of like your morning is how you're setting the tone for your day and your life really so that's why it's so important that's like the the biggest commonality along along the ultra wealthy is they have some type of they have some type of system and process to their morning that allows them to get into that zone or get deep work done a combination of both and sets them up to be super successful so i mean i could talk about this all day but i kind of just want to hit on a few things that probably everybody's heard of but just my kind of philosophy behind them yeah no it's fantastic and anybody that's interested in what carlos is talking about reach out to him uh, mm -hmm. We'll make sure we have all his contact info there and you can find him on all the social YouTube. Uh, we'll make sure, I, I don't know if we have your phone number and email if you want it up there, but we make sure. sure yeah, go for it. Yeah. 443-966-5158. Shoot me a text if you can. My phone is always on do not disturb for the most part. Let's, um, do, let's do that Carla, again. 443-966-5158. And then if you shoot me an email, that'll go to like my whole team so I can can get some help on it. Carlos at investorfuse.com. Boom. I love it. And, and this is all powerful stuff. I mean, there's so much to learn. I mean, you know, if we went through everything, we could be on here for four hours, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and just check out all of Carlos's content. And um, also, you know, we were talking about and brainstorming on it, which was taking care of your mindset, which I love. I love that morning routine which goes into mindset but also taking care of your mindset and if you don't you won't have the highest development and uh why why it's so important to have those uh routines in place that it's just not all over the place like you have that system all laid out which is powerful stuff so um uh, love it love everything that you talked about and people are watching um avi's watching and uh doug douglas is watching says uh greetings from college park maryland so people are That's watching there you go. There you go. Uh, I went to College Park. That's that's where the journey. That's where I read Thinking Grow Rich. I was selling luxury apartments, so I was pretty much touring families, selling directly to the parents. Typically, in College Park, I read Thinking Grow Rich. Heard about all the suggestion, which ironic enough was recommended from the guy that I ended up doing wholesaling and investor fees with before I knew him. Kind of just funny how the universe works. But yeah, shout out, shout out, College Park and the Terps. There you go. Yeah. But also, the you, but also the you, baby. I'm there you go. Now. It's all about the you, baby. You get, you got it. See, you know, you're, you're in Miami now, so yeah. you're going to start going to those games, right? I think yeah. they're going to be. Yeah, I'll take, uh, I think I told you when we were on the phone the other day that uh, I'm going to, I'm taking a couple real estate guys to the heat game. James Hawk is right over here in Edgewater. Oh, love James. James. I love the Hawk. Everybody I talk to in Florida, they know, they know the Tony Soprano of probate. I don't even have to say who it is. <laughs> I love that. You guys are too much. I, I love that crew. I love James Hawk. You're the man. Yeah. I mean, uh, I love everything that you all are bringing, you know, bringing the value, bringing that stuff to the real estate world that it, it's not just doing the deals, but it's, it's providing a service and value to helping investors level up on their business. So Carlos, this has been amazing. I mean, loved everything you talked about. Any other final stories that, uh, that you can think of that you wanted to share um, I mean, feel free and, uh, you know, we'll put your contact info up. So anybody that wants to reach out to you or is interested in really using investor fees. So tell everybody before we hop off, but why should they use investor fees? What's the why? Yeah. Investor fees is just a simple, easy, heavily supported tool to use. And we just work with so many companies at this point that we know what they want. Like we love getting in the trenches and instead of under, instead of like focusing time, um, which I do want to start getting some passive uh, properties or getting some app, just holding some assets. We really spend our time just like trying to understand what our companies want. So if you're doing direct to seller marketing, if you use specialty marketing tools, even if you're not, if, if you're considering it, feel free to reach out. I would be more than happy to chat. Uh, to end, man, I want to give you so much praise to the Prince of Probate. Al Nicoletti, man, like everybody, Taylor, Michael, everybody on your team has been fantastic. You're the absolute man, like meeting you first time. We just coincidentally sat next to each other at a mastermind. Could not be nicer. Um, one thing that's funny, I was telling Michael before this started going on air that you were you were saying like, oh man, like I'm moving like out of Miami. So I don't want you to think I didn't take your advice, but I was just feeling Miami and I love it down here. It's a good change of pace. Talk about like mindfulness, not necessarily my mindfulness, but a big piece of it was a personal development play. Like if I stayed in Baltimore 
in the same neighborhood, I could kind of, I could project more accurately what that year would look like versus kind of just dropping myself, kind of just like a, like a pattern interrupt to my uh, nervous system a good bit, just dropping me in Miami, have a, good, have a great friend base here, love the weather, can practice Spanish, which is like my biggest personal development goal now. So I don't want you to think that I didn't take your advice on uh, going to other places, but it's funny that we're chatting now, we were talking about moving to Miami and just being so helpful there and really just like, a, dude, just a genuine light in the community, like killing it on social media, just absolute rock star and family being in there, um, absolutely killing it. So pleasure and privilege being on then. Appreciate you. Hope this was valuable for the listeners. Happy to chat with anybody further because I kind of hopped around to a bunch of different stuff and a lot of fun, man. I, I, Carlos, I really appreciate you. That means a lot to me. I, I, I love it. I love that we were able to connect and, you know, hit it off. And um, I, I love that, you know, this is a value to the community and everything that we can do and ma- mastermind on brainstorm on is, is huge. So yeah, I appreciate that, man. It means a lot. And uh, everything that you're doing, keep going with everything in in the CRM world. This is going to be this is going to be huge. It's going to only increase as there's more deals and uh, things that are happening. And you know, it's 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 interesting. You know, a pattern interrupt. That that was the best thing that ever happened to me, which mm-hmm. was uh, you know having been in Miami for so long. Went to Orlando. That was the first pattern interrupt. Right, it was Miami to Orlando. First time even being out of, of, of the city and then going back um, almost made me feel more comfortable to do another pattern interrupt, which uh, ended up coming to Jacksonville. So mm-hmm. same thing for you. You, you. We can relate to those pattern interrupts in our business, and that actually could be a jump start for anybody and an inspiration for anybody that's kind of in their own world and wants to change something that they're doing. You know, And had I not left Miami to go to Jacksonville, Hey man, I don't know if we'd be doing this now, right? <laughs> maybe like, not. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe, yeah, maybe not have been in the same mastermind. That's, that's crazy to think about. Yeah, I mean, it's, same thing. I mean, I can't wait to hear your experiences because Miami, in the last two three years, has just been taken off with mm-hmm. the the arts, the districts, and what they're doing now down there. People, more people are moving. They're really changing the things, the ways uh, things are done down down there. And so, um, when you got people like James the Hawk down there, and you're down there, I mean. It's uh, it's huge stuff. So, man, I can't wait to see your growth. Can't wait to hear more stories and things that you're doing. I love it. And, uh, you know, uh, before we hop off, Carlos, final words, final thoughts on anything Carlos Zamora wants to say. One of my favorite things, kind of like a mindfulness, a little bit, a little woo-woo, but what I like to think about is I love like, and another, like Raul Bluth, like one of our interviews was just talking about the power of now, but. I love the idea of self-automation and just really focusing on like the inner awareness of your mind and body. And my, like kind of my favorite quote, one of my frameworks I live by is you're always in your own reality. Everybody is just a guess in it. You can choose your own thoughts. You can choose how you react to things. If something that you would label bad happens in the day, it's really just your, it's, it's really your reaction that chooses it. So at the end of the day, everybody's in their own reality. Everybody else is just a guess in it. So Focus on yourself, get present, get mindful, listen to listen and hang out with people like Al Nicoletti, the Prince of Probate, aka the Tony Soprano of Probate, and you'll be all right. I love that. <laughs> I'll be hearing that all night, right? <laughs> Carlos is making it a memorable experience for me, right? We can't, exactly. we can't forget this, man. This has been so valuable. Thank you, Carlos, for being on. Thank you for taking the time to go through this stuff. And we're going to keep dropping all of your contact info and how to get in touch with you. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, everybody that's, that was watching, I mean, you got to reach out to Carlos when it comes to this stuff. If you really want to tweak your business in real estate and not just do the same old or just use some of the complicated, CRMs, but really get down in it with specialty tools. It's going to be huge. Carlos, you're the man. I can't wait to see you soon, brother. It's uh, it's it's an honor to have you on the show. I love it. And uh, I'll see you soon, man. Likewise, man. A genuine pleasure and a privilege. And thank you for everybody listening uh, to Don. We definitely got to connect if you're, if you're still on here, but a ton of fun, man. Thank you so much. Thank you, man. I'll, I'll see you soon. Definitely. See you guys. All right, guys. Wow. That was a loaded episode. And I, I mean, I'm even learning on a CRM side on how these things work and ways that real estate professionals can really improve in their business and what they're doing and and how to capture leads better and set up automated systems to help qualify leads better and pick and, and find the right pieces and hires for your business with personality types and the right person that's going to be on the initial calls or follow up on cold calls. And 
I can go through so many things on the recap of this episode. And I just want to say to everybody that's watching, you know, thank you for everybody that's watching. And I see, I see you, Pablo, talking about the pattern interrupt of growth. Uh, the pattern interrupt is growth by design. A hundred percent, right? You know, it's, it's growth in, in what we're doing. And, um, I think that's really key in, in what our business is and, and are changing our mindset. So, um, so many things, so many things that were dropped today. If you missed the first part of the episode or you got in late, you got to go back. You got to go watch Carlos from the beginning. Talk about all the CRM on Investor Fuse. That's the company he is. He is. It's Investor Fuse, and it's it's killing it's killing it for investors. I mean, he talked about it multiple times. You see them right there, right, right there. The geeks, the cash geeks. They're using Investor Fuse, and the success story of what Dom and G have been able to leverage with Investor Fuse is huge, doing over 300 deals. So shout out to the Cash Geeks for killing it in their markets and wherever they're going uh, because it, it works, right? So if you're really thinking about getting in that game, get with Carlos, contact him. Uh, we we had all of his contact info. We'll we'll rewind this when it when the episode stops. But go back, go watch, go go figure out all those things on best lead management and how to talk to sellers and the best things that you can get out of them and seeing the psychology to a seller and also the mindfulness stuff. There's so many things we can go back on. But uh, love that you all stayed around. And uh, if you want more content like on the Al Nicoletti show, make sure you go back and check out the episode, rewind it. Go on the YouTube channel under Al Nicoletti, the Facebook page under Al Nicoletti and the personal page and on Instagram. I'm loving Instagram so much lately. I, I, I love what's happening on Instagram. So follow me at Al Nicoletti, uh, Attorney Nicoletti and uh, and follow me all, all over the social apps and Spotify and iTunes under the Al Nicoletti show where you see all the amazing guests that have been on season one, season two, season three. And uh, it's a wrap, everybody. Thank you all for staying on. Have a great night and I won't see you next week. Next week, uh, we're going to have a best of. I'm going to be out, but we're going to have the best of the Al Nicoletti show from the from the first quarter, right? So you can go back and see all the amazing guests that have been on on a, on a quarterly basis. But then I'll see you in two weeks, and uh, have a great night, everybody. I will see you soon. Take care.